Hi everyone, Christina here. Welcome to a Q&A video. I haven't done one of these in years. <laughs> my my Q&A videos from years ago were very long. I'm going to try to keep this one pretty succinct and short, but there are a lot of questions. Yesterday in the evening, I went on Instagram and I just said, hey, ask me whatever you'd like, whether it's crafting related or not. And if it's not too crazy, I'll answer it. So we've got a few today. We're gonna, I'm going to answer questions that I have not answered ever, ever. <laughs> so um, here we go. I've got my computer in front of me. I've taken some screenshots of the questions. And this first question was the most asked question, which then helped me decide what my last video was going to be for the year. So, um, so many of you asked, when are we going to see a craft room tour? Well, I spent most of the day cleaning my craft room and it has never been so clean. So my next video will be a craft room tour. I'm not going to go into detail and open every single drawer and cabinet, but I will give you a general overview of my new craft room, what I'm doing, uh, how I'm using it, and and how it came together. So hopefully I will have that up tomorrow, uh, Thursday. I'm going to try to put this Q&A up and then I'll put the, the uh, craft room tour up as well. Just depends on how fast I can get it edited. Okay, so... The next most common question, there were quite a few questions about uh, my husband, me and my husband. The most common question was, how did we meet? So many of you asked, how did we meet? So we met on online, on an app, like a lot of people these days. Um, we met on the app Hinge. Now, if any of you are single out there and you are, you haven't ever tried Hinge, I really encourage you to try it. It was different. Um, maybe it was because when we were on it, it was brand new, but um, I just found it really refreshing in comparison to some of the other types of apps that were out there at the time. Um, it was really, really nice. I liked Hinge and that's how we met. And we met a few months before the pandemic started. And I think I've said this to my friends and family. I think eventually we would have ended up married, um, you know, in the long run. But being like with lockdown and really closing in our circle that we were, you know, spending time with, I think it really accelerated the relationship. So we were married about a year after we met. Now, in Utah, that is not uncommon. <laughs> A lot of people meet and are married a few months later, but um, we actually preferred to wait a little bit longer. We were thinking of actually getting married in spring of this year, um, but it just happened the way building the house, um, the timing of it just worked out so that we needed to get married a little bit earlier. So we got married in January and um, we're actually going to be going away for... It's kind of like a redo honeymoon because we really didn't get one last year because of the pandemic. And I don't know that it's safer to travel now. Maybe we're just maybe a little bit more comfortable with taking the risk, but we're going to attempt a honeymoon. Speaking of my husband, the other question that was really common was, will you ever meet my husband? Will he ever be on camera? Um, maybe someday. It's completely up to him, like if he wants to be or not. Um, I'll leave it up to him. Another question that was asked multiple times, which really surprised me, was does your husband ever craft with you? Um, I wouldn't say that he's like crafting at the same time as me. A lot of times, well, this has happened a few times since my craft room has been finished, but I will be working on something. I'll be filming something here at my you know, main workstation and he might be in the corner on his laptop working on something else. So we do that a lot. Um, our very first Valentine's Day, this is cute. He actually made me a card. He'd never made one before. And what made it even better was he filmed himself like vlog style going into Michael's and buying all the supplies. Or maybe it was Hobby Lobby. I can't remember. But he bought all the supplies and then he filmed himself making it like because it was just kind of funny. And it was adorable. It was so, so cute. I still have the card. It's adorable. 
I've saved it. And, um, and I think he's made me a couple cards since, but he's a sweetheart. He's really sweet like that. This was a question that came up multiple times. How are you cheeky people asking me? Um, if we're going to have kids, are we pursuing parenthood? I liked the way that was phrased. Kids are not in the cards for us and we are totally okay with that. We love the cats. We love travel. We have a very, very full life. Um, but, but no kids. This next question is, uh, asked, how did you start designing for Simon says stamp? Um, when I was hired at Simon, I had been working at basic gray for a couple of years and, um, Simon hired me not specifically to design product for them, but to work on like their website graphics and flyers and things like that. And much like what happened at Stampin' Up! where I started designing in one place, I quickly kind of moved over to product design. So I, um, I think within about a year and a half, maybe, yeah, it was about a year and a half. Within about a year and a half, I had transitioned for, at Simon going from, uh, you know, just website graphics, things like that. I had moved over to product design. And in 2014, I uh, left full-time employment at Simon Says Stamp, and I've been a contract designer for them ever since. So I... The way I started designing product for Simon was I was designing other things for them beforehand. So it wasn't like a, like sending them, you know, I don't even know how people design for Simon outside of it. I don't know how they start. Um, Cause I came in designing other things, but that's kind of what happened. That's how I did that. Okay. So this question says, my parents talked to me out of an art degree. Do you ever regret it? I don't regret it one bit. I almost didn't go into art. I'm so glad I did. I think I probably would have found my way here anyway, but I'm glad that I went about it in a way that I was able to hone those create, creative skills. And um, I think anyone can get into art at any age. So if you want to go back and pursue that art degree, I say go for it. I have three questions that I got that were basically about how to stay motivated creatively. And um, what works for me is... Um, I, I like to go online and just look at stuff a lot, like not even paper crafting related, like look through furniture catalogs, look through, go to Pinterest, just like scroll through Pinterest and, and get you know, going that way. Um, that's really creative for me. Also, uh, you can do yourself a favor when you are, when you are feeling really creative, write down your ideas in a sketchbook, take notes, bookmark, um, save posts at Instagram. When you are feeling creative, set yourself up to get back to that creativity by saving everything all at once. And then when you're kind of have a lull later, you can go back to those resources and see what you found inspiring before. That really gets me going again too. Just knowing, okay, I liked this before. Maybe I could do something like this, you know, or just look for that inspiration. Okay. So Canadian Nurse Ratchet. It's a fun name. Asked, what is your go-to paper for ink blending? My go-to paper for ink blending is Nina Classic Crest Solar White 80 Pound. Um, it's kind of like what I, it's my white cardstock that I use for everything. It is a workhorse. It does so many different things. So that's the one I use. And along the same lines, uh, there were a couple of people that asked me what was what's my favorite black watercolor paper. Um, I'm kind of split right now. I want to experiment some more with the Van Gogh black watercolor paper, but it's either the Van Gogh black watercolor paper or the, uh, Legion, is it Stonehenge? Yeah. Legion Stonehenge black watercolor paper. Those are the only two water black watercolor papers that I'm familiar with. And I like both, but I haven't used the Van Gogh one, um, much more. I want to experiment some more, but those are two that I like. Someone asked about this canvas that's right up here on my wall that says Mary and Bright. Um, I actually created that myself. Um, I did the lettering and then I sent it off to a canvas printing website and they sent it back. It was actually really fast and easy. If you guys are interested in something like that, like maybe some prints that you can order and have canvases made with like quotes on them, let me know because I could possibly do something like that. I haven't like updated my shop in years. <laughs> but if it was something that would be of interest to you guys, you could do that. And you, all you would have to do is take the file and, you know, have it printed on a canvas and you would have 
you know, like a, a letter that gives you the rights to do that in case, in case there was any, ever, ever any question, you could just have it printed once for you. Or if there was enough interest, I could possibly have them made and then ship them out. You know, like, let me know. Speaking of, someone asked me a while back, like about my black and white US map that's in my craft room. It's just over there. Um, that was one that I made at Basic Gray. I'm, I've considered updating it, making a new version, and then possibly selling it. Let me know if you guys would be interested in that too. So basically like canvas art prints. Would you be interested? <laughs> Let me know in the comments. Okay, this next question is fun. It's about cruising. Uh, will you be doing a cruise after the pandemic has passed? Um, truth is, I have been on a cruise. <laughs> I, I did not put it on social media because it was just a vacation. I went with my husband and my mother. Um, she cruised in a room by herself and my husband and I were in a room and uh, this happened the beginning of November. It was, it just, the stars aligned and it was the perfect opportunity. I have never booked a cruise like with such a small amount of time between booking and going. It was about three and a half weeks. Airfare worked out. Um, it was a fully vaccinated cruise and we were only going to a private island. It was a five day cruise. It was short. Um, we felt really safe on the cruise ship and it was a brand new ship too. It was the Rotterdam from Holland America. It was absolutely beautiful. Yeah. So, uh, to answer your question, uh, yes, I have already gone on one and I actually have more cruises planned in the upcoming year. So, uh, yeah. And speaking of cruises, someone, um, asked a question about if I was ever going to have another crafty cruise, you may know that back in 2019, I had a crafty cruise. There were about 18 of us, all crafters. It was such an amazing group. And then right before the pandemic, I was supposed to be going on another crafty cruise with about 60 of you to Alaska. And that was canceled, obviously. Um, I don't think I'm going to do a crafty cruise again. I wish I could pull that all together, but um, I don't think I will. Um, it was a lot. It was a lot to organize and stuff. I loved it. Loved it. I loved all the people I, I met. We're still friends. We still talk to this day, but I don't know that I would want to open it up to that many people again. So I don't think, I don't think it will happen, sadly. So for the last question, it's a fun one. Basically, have you ever had a dog or will you ever get a dog? I am not opposed to dogs. Um, I like it along with dogs. They're fine. Um, I think I'm just more of a cat person. I just love, I love cats. And the three cats that I've had as an adult have just been stellar. Manny was amazing. Sophie and Daphne are amazing. It's wonderful. So I'm a cat person, but I'm not opposed to having a dog. Never say never. Thanks for tuning in. Um, come back very soon for that craft room tour. Um, I'm hoping to have that up very, very soon. I want to get it up as soon as possible. So watch for that. Thanks for watching. I'll see you guys in another video very soon.